Hello everyone and welcome to Jessie's Vintage Journey. So excited to be finally filming this video. I've been on YouTube right now for about a year and a half as bow ties and books. I run a YouTube where I wear a bow tie and I talk about books. I have always loved dapper fashion. I've always loved vintage fashion and I've always loved reading and literature and so that's why I started my first YouTube. But now that I've been on the platform for a while and I've gotten even more head over heels for vintage style and fashion fashion, lifestyle, and decor, I decided to start a separate channel, a second channel, where I could explore my vintage love to my heart's content. And so on this channel, you're going to see me do a lot of hauls and hairstyling tutorials. You're going to see playlists of music that's vintage that I absolutely love. I'm going to be making vintage vlogs and some challenge videos as well as style tutorials. I eventually want to branch off into making my own vintage clothes, but we are not quite there yet. This video is going to be me introducing myself for a little bit and then I'm going to show you this massive vintage haul that I picked up. It's a store that I've had my eye on for quite some time and I finally went in. I just kept missing their opening hours and I finally was able to catch them at the right time and I was in love. I spent about two hours in the store and it definitely shows in the haul that I'm about to show you. So a little bit about me before we get started. My name is Jessie. I am an Afro-Mexican individual. I absolutely love the 1920s to the 1950s period and I always have. As a kid I grew up watching old movies. Um, one of my favorite movies of all time is Gilda, the 1946 film with Rita Hayworth. That movie I started watching I think when I was 14 years old and I fell head over heels especially when I looked into Rita's background and what she suffered and her trials and tribulations of Hollywood. I developed such a deep respect for not only her but what the women of her era were going through in Hollywood and on screen and I've also always just loved historic fiction and been so drawn to it. And one of my favorite things about vintage is that I get to explore the style and the music from those periods that I really really love without having to endure the awful prejudice that came with those periods. So it's really a safe way for me to kind of engage with cult with a culture that I've been really really fascinated by for quite some time. I'm absolutely obsessed with blues music. I have there's a playlist over on iTunes. It's called um, Women in Blues and I've been listening to it and I think the tunes are from 1925 all the way to 1960. Um, I'll leave that playlist link down below. I've been playing it non-stop just on a loop. I really really want to invest in a vintage record player and just experience the music in the authentic way. Most times I'm wearing dapper fashion. I really really love my button-ups, my jackets, my hats, my trouser pants, but I've been branching out lately into more feminine styles of a vintage period. I just, I've never, I'm not really drawn to feminine styles in the modern fashion sense, but I definitely am in the kind of historic vintage sense. Um, so what you're going to see a lot on this channel is Mexican vintage because that is part of my background and American vintage because that is also part of my background. I also really, really love to cook. My mother was a chef. I used to be a dancer. I am trained in ballet, West African movement, hip hop, and modern, as well as the aerial arts such as pole dancing. I really want to get back into dancing at some point, but right now my heart and my soul and my energy are totally just going into my booktube channel and now my vintage channel. I think that's enough about me if you have any further questions just let me know down below you can also totally get to know me by checking out my booktube channel which of course I will leave links down below and there's going to be a Jesse's vintage journey Instagram I've already started that I would absolutely love your support on that journey all right y'all here we go I got four bags of goodies from this store let's start with the first one the first item that I have here is this vintage tea kettle. It has this nice wooden handle, which I absolutely love. I've always wanted a set like this. You can definitely tell that it was handmade and it's in phenomenal condition. It is quite dirty though, so I definitely need to wash it. Oh wow, and I didn't notice until now that the name Pinkerton is inscribed on the bottom. Do you see that? Oh my goodness, wow, that is so freaking cool. This is what I love so much about vintage wear and decor. You can create stories for who had the possession before you. You have no idea what kind of history an object has had and there's something about that that I find very comforting. I also love that vintage is reusable and that it's sustainable and you can repurpose vintage. I think that's so freaking awesome. I'm a huge fan of tea. I drink a lot of tea in my booktube vlogs. I have a monthly tea subscription that you see me unbox on my booktube channel. So I'm definitely going to be making some tea out of this rather soon. 
I also got these gorgeous earrings and they were only $6. There was no way that I couldn't not have them. Just look at the detail on them. Super beautiful. They would go so nicely with this sweater, which I also pulled off of a mannequin at this store. I just couldn't resist wearing it <laughs> for the purposes of this video. I didn't get to try it on in the store, but it fits me absolutely perfectly. I am super shocked because I'm, I have quite a small frame and usually things hang off of me and don't fit the way that I would like them to, but I love that this fits exactly like a glove. It's not too tight, it's not too loose, and it's in wonderful shape and quality, and the fabric isn't itchy at all. I'm one of those total babies. Like when it comes to rough fabric on my skin, I cannot stand it. This is a gorgeous cup that I picked up. The detailing on this is so absolutely incredible. It reminds me of embroidery. The design and the uniqueness of this piece is phenomenal. If you know what this piece is called, like the name, the proper name for this type of cup, please let me know. And I adore that it has this nice gold rim on the top of it. Of course, it's not actual gold, but I found it so beautiful that I couldn't not get it. Now, true to my booktube form, I had to pick up some books at the Emporium. The first book that I picked up is The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris, which I read last year and loved to pieces. I really want to read the companion novel Silka's Journey. I believe it's a thriller and it's called The Kept, uh, a novel by James Scott, who's an author I'm unfamiliar with. I don't anticipate that I will get to read this for quite some time. It takes place in 1897, which I love. And it follows a creepy house, which is one of my favorite tropes in books like creepy isolated homes that are set in the middle of the wilderness get me every time, probably because I currently live in Minnesota. And then there is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. People on Bookstagram were raving about this all throughout last year and it was only $5 so I decided to pick it up and I will get to it when I can. Super, super excited about this. It's supposed to be a glorious work of fiction. Next, I picked up this really lightweight rectangular wooden box. It has the initials MH carved into it. It's pretty shallow and it seems like an odd thing to pick up, but as I mentioned, I love bow ties and I have a bow tie collection and I'm always looking for ways that I can neatly display my bow ties. So that's what I got this for. Um, this way I can lay out my bow ties and just open up this box and see them all neatly and arranged in a row. I spend way too much time trying, trying to pick through my bow ties and get them organized. That is also the reason that I got this shelf. This of course can be used for all kinds of purposes. You know, you can put this on a side table and put candles and your keys and some books in it or your mail. You can use it as an organizer. You could put it under your bed and keep stuff in it, but I'm going to personally be using it to help me organize my bow ties because my collection has gotten completely out of control. I do love that it has handles and it is incredibly sturdy. It's in phenomenal condition. Seriously, the wood is so smooth. It doesn't have any real nicks that I can see. Okay, it does on the bottom, but nothing bad. There's a couple scratches here. And I think that this was only $8. Honestly, I'm so incredibly glad that I bought it. And I think between the two of these trays, I will have plenty of room to display all of my bow ties. Now, this piece is one of my absolute favorites from my haul. This is a vintage luggage set. I suppose you could also use this as a makeup case. It is by the company Mission and it is in phenomenal shape. Just a slight bit of wear on the brass here, but I think that I can varnish that and, and buff that out. The handle has some wear on the sides, but honestly, it's not noticeable. It's in this beautiful emerald green, which is my second favorite color in the entire world. I absolutely love green. I've been looking for green bow ties for quite some time. They're harder to find than you might think, but I did stuff some things inside of this in order to save the bags at the vintage store. It comes with this strap. Strap says mission and it hooks right into the side right here. So it turns into a very trendy over the shoulder bag. Honestly, you can use this for a lot of different things, but I travel frequently. I'm actually about to get on a plane to go to New York in about 12 hours. I love that there is is a inner compartment in here so that I can keep my stuff organized and not have it jumble around. And then on the inside, honestly has a, su a surprising amount of room for such a small container. There is a pocket here for organizing and then there's another one with a really, really nice zipper in here so that all of your stuff stays nice and secure. Then of course there is the main compartment, which is honestly quite roomy and this nice Velcro strap that connects to this tab up here just to keep your things extra safe and secure. Honestly though, how cute is this? And one of the things that 
I stored in that bag is this amazing teapot. I mean, can you tell how much I love tea? But again, it's got that dark green that I love and this dark brown coloring that I absolutely adore. Earth tones are definitely my favorite. I think that that is most definitely my aesthetic in case you can't tell. Browns, rays, dark greens, those warm tones that make you feel at home are absolutely where I feel the most comfortable. All it says on the bottom of this is England. There's no other identifying information, so I really don't know where this came from, but I absolutely love it. I think it's the perfect size. It's definitely one of the top four pieces that I hauled at this Emporium. Moving on to the second bag. In here I have what is potentially my favorite piece. And that is this beautiful vintage telephone. I always wanted one of these as a child. What would have been perfect is if it had the rotator dialer, but it still has this really satisfying burst to press. Sadly, it is not functional, but I mean, I mean, I took a photo of this and posted it on my Instagram, so definitely check that out. Honestly, I cannot wait to find a space for this in my home to put on display. It's definitely one of my favorite possessions. And it was super affordable. I think that this was only $11. One of the magnets that I purchased at the store was stuck to the bottom. This is a Prince magnet. It's a photo of some dapper men standing outside of a cave. I'm definitely going to be putting this in one of my bullet journals. I picked up another magnet. <laughs> this one made me laugh so hard when I saw it. It says, sometimes I put my phone down and do things with two hands, like in the old days. I'm sorry, olden days, excuse me. I also grabbed Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen, which is a book that I read a few years ago and absolutely loved. It destroyed me. The movie is incredible. Um, I read this through my local library. I'm a really big fan of reading books through the library first and then finding them via thrift if you loved them. Um, part of that kind of journey and exploration is really, really fun because it makes owning the book that much more rewarding at the end of it. Highly recommend this book if you haven't read it and if you enjoy historical fiction, especially stories that center around animals and forbidden love. And I believe this was set in like the 1920s or 30s. I also grabbed this beautiful Frida Kahlo magnet. I have a Frida Kahlo painting that you see in the back of a lot of my booktube videos, as well as a Frida Kahlo jewelry box. That means a lot to me. So I'm always collecting Frida merchandise. And I picked up these amazing earrings that I seriously cannot wait to wear. They're so melodic and the design on them reminds me of Hercules. I think it's very reminiscent of Greek art. Sadly, I'm not sure what culture this originally was modeled from or came Came from. So if you have any ideas, definitely let me know what you think. And last but certainly not least, we have another item that means quite a bit to me. This is a vintage picnic basket. I have always wanted one of these. I absolutely squealed when I saw it. It has a working clasp. You just rotate it and it pops right open. And in the back, it has two holders for some wine or some juice or whatever you would like to bring with you on your picnic. I love that it comes with this vintage ribbon. It's got dogs on it and grapes and a rooster, a rocking horse. And it also came with this nice to and from tag that I'm most likely going to be keeping on it. And the last of my haul is inside of this. Really loved this abstract mug. I collect mugs. I have a really nice growing mug collection, but not a lot of them are vintage. So so once I saw this, I knew I had to pick it up. The style is very Parisian and I don't have anything like it. So I just had to have it. Then I grabbed this exotic mango tin candle. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I also picked up these Mensa Mindbender cards. These have 75 different word puzzles on them. I haven't gone through them yet because I'm going to hang out with a friend in New York and I'm gonna bring these with and we're going to go through them together. I haven't peeked out of fairness to that friend, but they have anagrams, word puzzles, magic scores, squares, all ranging from basic to difficult levels, and I love challenging my mind, exercising my brain, so I'm really excited to see how I do with these. I am an incredibly huge fan of gloves. I'm often wearing gloves in situations where it's not considered appropriate to wear them, uh, which means that I'm right at home in vintage fashion because gloves were so normalized in prior decades. And so, especially because it is winter here in Minnesota, I picked up two sets of gloves in colors that I wear frequently and enjoy. This is a nice burgundy. The only thing I don't love about these gloves is the shininess on them, but otherwise I love the buckling detail. I love the color. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the flower on the finger, but they were in great condition. And like I said, I wear gloves a lot, so you can really never have too many, especially where I live. And then we have the same gloves in tan, which is more my style, my speed, as you can see. And these go perfectly with this vintage Ralph Lauren bag that I 
carry around. This picnic basket also came with a nice wine key that I'm going to be leaving in the basket at all times. The worst thing would be to go to a picnic and not have a wine key. That would suck. To go along with this beautiful item that I first showed you, we have these two small teacups. There's something about teacups without a handle that speaks to my soul. I don't know what it is. These ones I actually really like because they have hairline cracks in them. They're sm they've been smoothed over through the um, the kilning process. I don't know if that's the correct word for it. I apologize. I I'm not very um, educated in the realm of pottery, so if you know better, let me know. But I like the kind of smooth hairline cracks because they give a sense of character to the pieces. You know that they were handmade, that they're individual, that there's nothing like them out there. This one doesn't have the cracks that this one does, so I'm really excited to have some tea with a friend and bond over this tea set. I really hope you enjoyed Jessie's Vintage Journey's first ever video. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a lot on this channel, and I'm so, so excited to be here. All of my social media links will be in the description box below. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Feel free to ask me any questions that you would like, and I will see you in my next one.